going on? Late one night in 2019, I was followed home. I'd been at a work event about 30 minutes from where I lived, quite a rural part of Cornwall, and I was about 10 minutes into my drive back home, and something felt weird in my stomach. And I looked up in my rearview mirror, and there was a car there. So I turned left, it was still there. I turned right, it was still there. I took several little country lanes, it was still there. I turned down the mile-long dirt track that was my driveway, it was still there. Now, this incident actually led to the biggest fork in my career, actually probably in my life. And it's actually a fork that's having ramifications across the space industry today, and one that's actually impacting all of us and our future in the final frontier. But before I get on to what that actual fork is, I kind of want to talk to you about the tools that I've learned along my journey that have helped me navigate that left to right and hopefully some of these tools you can take away, maybe use them when you come up against a fork in your life. I grew up in a very remote part of British Columbia, Canada. Um, it was a small town, it was built on industries like forestry and mining and ranching. Um, my mum was one of the first female park rangers. She specialized in building nature trails and re rehabilitating wildlife. My dad fought forest fires using water bombing airplanes. If I wasn't in, in the middle of the forest helping flag out nature trails and actually being chased by bears, I was at remote smoke jumping bases watching a radar with lightning strikes and seeing all the smoke jumpers go out ready to, to battle the fires. I didn't really realize this was, this was a unique childhood until Probably I moved over here and I started telling these stories to people and they were like, no, that's not normal. Um, but that childhood completely molded me. Um, and fundamentally, it taught me one th important thing about Canada. And I think Canadians are stereotypically known around the world for being very kind. But don't be fooled, that kindness is not weakness. That kindness is built out of the need to survive and the need to rely on kindness in our communities, of our neighbors, to help us survive when Mother Nature really slams us, because it does in Canada. I watched my homeland last year burn to the ground, and then a few months later be followed by floods. But I also watched my communities back home, you know, do things like bring food to one another, to actually risk lives to help save their neighbors. That is kindness to its truest form. We learn from a really young age in Canada that kindness equals survival. Just a couple months ago, um, I was in the supermarket and the front cover of The New Scientist had something that caught my eye. It was a headline and it said, Survival of the Kindest. And the article went on to talk about how researchers have discovered that the only reason our ancestors kind of developed beyond animals was that we looked after one another. And obviously, way back when, that was with things like food and warmth. But now it's actually using technologies, and it's using technology to help us um, survive things like climate change and help our communities survive through kindness. <laughs> and so what, what I'm looking at today is something very different. However, Canada was, was an important part of that step, but like many children in rural parts of communities all around the world, you want to get out. There wasn't much of a future in space for me in, in my small town. So I went out and I, I traveled and I ended up at my dream school, which was the London School of Economics. Now, there I felt like quite an imposter. Um, I was surrounded by the children of world leaders and royalty, and here I was, a small town Canadian girl. But once again, I looked at how I could use kindness and things like economics to bring maybe new ways of looking at sustainable development in rural communities. And that actually led me down to Cornwall, which is one of the most deprived areas in Europe. And so I moved down to Cornwall, where now I am the first ever female director of a spaceport anywhere in the world. And so, <laughs> thank you. So what is a spaceport? Well, it's exactly what it says on the tin. It's a port to space. In our instance, <laughs> in our instance it's a port port for satellites to get to space. Now this image here probably doesn't look like what you would imagine as a spaceport. 
And that's because what the UK government identified a few years ago as a market opportunity. We build the, you know, the, um, a large proportion of the world's small, small satellites here in the UK, but at the moment they all get shipped overseas to launch. They get shipped to places like the US and Kazakhstan and until more recently uh, Russia. And they wanted to capture that market here in the UK. So they came up with a program called Launch UK and they identified several sites around the UK that could potentially launch to space. So Cornwall Airport Newquay was one of those, and it is an airport. And all we're about is integrating launch into, into an active civilian airport. And we're doing it with our partners at Virgin Orbit. Um, Richard Branson has two space companies, one Virgin Galactic, which tends to get all the headlines, but we're working with Virgin Orbit, which is a small satellite launching company. Um, they use a Boeing 747 aircraft with a 70-foot rocket under one of its wings, and it launches that rocket mid-air. No big deal. And that rocket then goes into space where it deploys satellites into low Earth orbit. 747 comes back and is ready to go again. Now, we've been working on this for about eight years. Quite hard, long, painful years. Quite a roller coaster. But this summer, we're taking the UK to the space for the first time ever. <laughs> Why do we need satellites? Why are they so important to us? Every single one of you today has used a satellite at some point in your day. From probably the food that you ate this morning, whether it was the wheat in your cereal or toast that was probably monitored by, by a satellite somewhere, that farm that grew that wheat, to your phones, to anybody watching me online right now on the internet that you're using, to our medical industry, to things like finance. It underpins our daily lives here on Earth, but it does some really crucial things. It saves lives as well. The image behind me there is from the Ukraine, which I'm sure many of you have seen some of the really, really sad images from the Ukraine from satellites. But it gives us a perspective, an unbiased perspective on our world. It also gives us over 50% of our climate data today that we're using to help try and battle climate change. Again, it helps us monitor how we're behaving on our planet, how companies and businesses are what they're doing to our planet and holds them to account. Satellites are flipping awesome. <laughs> but, and this is where the car following me home comes into the story. A lot of people don't understand why satellites are so important. And they don't understand why we need to put them into space when we have enough problems here on Earth and that we should be focusing here on Earth rather than up there in space. In 2019, we were going through a Cornwall Council investment raising process to get the final amount of, of investment we needed to create the spaceport. At the exact same time, Cornwall Council declared a climate emergency, which, of course, we 100% supported. But we naively didn't realize that the average person on the street does not understand that satellites are part of the solution. We thought, oh, this is great. You know, we can actually get the satellites up there that can help us with this climate emergency. But, as you can see here from this image, which was from the final vote for the council, this was pretty much every one of our meetings leading up to, um, to that moment. I became the kind of pinup of their frustration. I was harassed online, I was intimidated, my children were intimidated, and I was followed home. That still does happen. And you know what? I totally do not blame them. Because, Two reasons. The first reason, the space industry is absolutely shockingly bad at communicating why space is so important to, to the average person on the street, let alone environmental um, reasons. I sit at conferences all the time and I hear the most amazing technologies that are going on to help us. But you might have heard the, the, the saying space is hard. Well, actually, translating space to the average person is really hard, and we're really bad as an industry at doing it. The second reason is this, that space is actually impactful on the environment, launch in particular. If you close your eyes and you imagine a space launch about to happen, nothing about that says sustainability, nothing. And it's not. If you think about space launch, it's secretive, it's closed off, it's at remote parts of the world where you cannot access it. And it's very, very difficult to get any information out of them. Believe me, I have tried. Um, and it's not transparent at all. Industry is not. So, we have a choice here. And this is this fork in the road. 
that, has, that led me to this point in my career. And it's quite simple, actually. One way is bad space, and one way is good space. Well, what's bad space? Bad space is pretty much, pretty much what's been happening over the last 50 years. It's basically building technologies in secret, um, launching them in secret, chucking things up into space to do a lot of secretive stuff, um, not really caring about what happens to your, your technology in space once it's, it's not usable anymore, so you've got loads of issues with space debris. That's bad space. And then it's actually monopolizing the data that's coming back down to you know, your private investors or a lot of white men, basically, is what bad space is. And that's what's been going on for the last 50 years. Well, what's good space? What is good space? It's something quite new. It's something that the UK and us here you know, in Cornwall are, are trying to take a global lead in because there's a huge gap in this market at the moment. When I took on the head role of Spaceport Cornwall um, only a couple of years ago, a lot of people didn't think I could do it. I was told I was too young, I was too inexperienced in the space sector. I obviously didn't look or speak like a Spaceport director should. I'm sure you can all imagine what that might be. And I really did have a decision to make. I could be good at space, which was basically toe the line, business as usual, get stuff into space um, as people expected, as low cost as possible. Or I could look at my local community, the environment. I could look at my two young girls at home and my, my Ben, and I could say, you know what, we could use space for good. We could do something different here. So, we are. <laughs> we really are. And we're really excited about how we're approaching and how we're making Cornwall proud of how we want to go to space. And how are we doing this? How is a small town Canadian girl and my small but mighty team of only six people going up against this 50 plus year old dinosaur? Well, it's, it's our purpose, it's good space. It motivates us every single day to get up and face politicians and um, protests and pandemics. It motivates me to get up and face the patriarchal industry, as well as motivate me to sit down with the head of Extinction Rebellion over a cup of coffee and talk about a way forward. But a purpose is only words, really. We have to back that up with integrity and action. And so what we're doing, we've got a sustainability action plan, a carbon report which shows the good and the bad, and what we're going to actually can do about it. It has an ethical framework. You know, we're creating a community satellite that we're designing, building, launching, tracking, all from Cornwall. It's going to map the ocean health around the, our coast. And we're going to run that data all through our outreach program and inspire the next generation to not only get into STEM careers, but to use the STEM careers to do something good for our planet. That's what good space is. And so this is why I'm excited to now go to space, because what we want to do now is to go out and challenge others to do this, the same. We want Cornwall to be the guiding light for all the 70 new potential spaceports planned. We want to set the benchmark for how we should be accessing space. Cornwall's not Cape Canaveral, and I am not Elon Musk. <laughs> but in that being different, it's allowed us to kind of actually do something truly remarkable. What if a spaceport was sustainable? What if a spaceport was net zero? What if a spaceport was B Corp? What if a spaceport democratized space and brought it right down to Earth? Can we do it? Of course we can if we want to. So in an industry that's built on billions and billionaires, we want to do something bigger. We've got a moment here, all of us in this room, where humanity is about to become multiplanetary. How we do that is up to us. You guys need to start asking questions about this industry. Because it is, it is our future, it's our children's future, about where we're going and how we're getting there, and how we want to be represented, and how we want to use space back here on Earth. I choose using it for good. But the tools that I've learned, hopefully, will allow you to help to do the same. So the tools in summary, that I have, have learned along this interesting journey that I've had so far. I've learned 
to really hone in on my purpose, to use that purpose to be my filter to identify opportunities as well as threats. I've been transparent about the good and the bad and what we're going to do about the bad. I've acted with integrity because I've backed that up with action, but then I've gone out and challenged the status quo. But finally, I've been kind, and I've, yes, even in business, I've been kind. Look, if I can do kindness in a harsh domain like space, and I can use kindness at, through at every conversation I have, through every action that I take, then you can use it in whatever you're passionate about. You can actually bring good to your space. And so here we are, we're about to go to space, but that's actually the easy bit. Thank you so much.